what are we talking about today? We're talking about queues. We've spoken about a few abstract data structures. We've spoken about linked list. We've spoken about stacks, right? Today we're talking about queues. So in a stack, as we remembered from the examples we spoke about, we spoke about having a stack of plates, for example, where you have a stack of plates on a table. How do you access a plate? You access the plate via the top, right? If you remove a plate from the top, what function was that in a stack? Pop, right? If I remove a plate from the stack, I pop it. If I was to add a new pancake on top of a stack of pancakes, what function is that? Push. So I push a pancake onto the stack. And real life examples, we use a navigation controller all the time in iOS. This is a stack, right? I have a navigation controller. It comes with one, well, maybe it doesn't have any view controller. But if it has one view controller, it has one view controller currently on the stack. As we add new view controllers, they go on top of that navigation stack. And we have a pop view controller. We've seen that. Right? We've used that. So we push a view controller when we want we want we push a view controller when we want to add a new view controller onto the navigation stack. When we want to remove it, we pop it or we dismiss. Dismiss is still has pop. Okay? So that's a stack. Right? And a stack is a structure such that it's a LIFO structure. What does LIFO mean? Last in, first out, right? That doesn't happen on a movie line. On a movie line, we don't have a stack waiting for a movie or a movie to enter the movie theater. We don't have a stack there. In a movie implementation, we have a queue, right? You stand on a queue when you're waiting for a movie, right? Or when you're on a phone waiting for service, you're in a queue, right? They'll tell you 10 minutes. Uh, estimated time of wait is 10 minutes, an hour. That's based on the queue. That's based on first come, first serve, right? First come, first serve, first in, first out, FIFO. So a queue is a FIFO structure. A stack is a LIFO structure, right? An ideal queue, the first person to go to the movie theater is the first person to get a seat at the movie theater, right? But now movie theaters are better. There's assigned seats, right? So it doesn't matter when you come in. It's great. But if you're in a phone call or you call in like your tax service, tax prep, whatever, you're on a queue, you're waiting in line, you're on a queue, first in, first out. So that's what we're going to be implementing today. We'll be implementing a queue structure. And queues of stacks are very important, especially as we get in deeper into data structures. Queues and stacks are very important, right? They solve everyday data structure problems. Okay. What does a queue have? We spoke about a queue being a FIFO structure. What's the functionality of a queue? Those are the functionalities of a queue here. When you want to add a new person to that line at that movie theater, the function is called in queue. You in queue in somebody. If you're removing somebody from that line, that person gets dequeued from the line. You remove them from the line, and whether you remove that person from the line, you remove them from the front of the queue. I'm not moving anybody, Siri. OK, OK. <laughs> At what point did I say Siri? Did you say Siri? Siri, right? I should probably call it Siri. So we dequeue. What part of the queue do we dequeue from? The front. The front. What part do we in queue? The back, right? That person who comes in front of you at a movie theater, right? There's arguments there, right? Because that's not the norm, right? It's not the norm for all of a sudden you just come at the front of the line at some movie theater. We heard you, truck, man. OK, so those are the functionalities we will be implementing. We'll also implement a peak functionality. What's an ideal function for peak? If you remember back to our stack implementation, what did peak do in our stack? Service on top. Yes, exactly. So it returned the object at the top. Right? It didn't remove it. It just took a peek at that object. Yeah. So we'll also implement peak. We'll implement count. How many items do I have in my queue? And we'll also implement is empty. We'll implement those as properties on our queue. So our queue will have two functions. One is in queue, dequeue, and we have a few properties to check the state of our queue. We have a count, is empty, and a peak function. And to reiterate, we'll be implementing a queue using an array. Okay? We could implement a queue using a linked list. 
But for today, we'll be implementing a queue using an array, very similar to what we did with the stack lecture. Everybody remember that? Right? Cool. So we'll introduce what queues are. There's many different types of queues as we get further into data structures. Post CTA, we'll be talking more about data structures and more complex data structures. There's priority queues and all that stuff. We'll talk about that later. But today, it's simply introducing what a queue is. How can I implement a queue using an array? OK, so let's go to our playgrounds, or let's start a new playground. So let me cancel out of this. So go to Xcode File, New. Playgrounds, it's a blank playground, and we will save it somewhere, save it somewhere. Whatever we do today, please push it to GitHub, and I'd simply call this Q or Qs, and create. So here I have my playgrounds file, and what are we talking about today? We're talking about Qs, and we said Qs is an abstract data type that is a FIFO structure, meaning first object added is the first Data structure. Okay. Functions of a queue, or we could say methods. Methods of a queue, we have in queue. What does in queue do? Add. What does it add it? Add item to the back of the queue. And we have DQ. What does DQ do? From? Remove item from the front of the queue. And properties will implement properties. We'll have a count property, we'll have an is empty property, and we'll have a peak, a peak property. Okay, cool. <laughs> we'll start off with a struct. It's going to be a queue type. And here we have a queue. Remember back in generics, we want our queue to be of a generic type. What does that mean? I want to be able to create a queue of integers, or a queue of strings, or a queue of my custom type called fellow. So I'll create a queue which takes a generic type, T. As we said, we'll be implementing We'll be implementing a queue using an array. So we'll have an array here called elements, which is an array of type T. Currently, how many elements does my array have? Zero. Zero. So we're in a struct. We'll make our first function is going to be a mutating because we're in a struct. A struct is a copy value type. So here we want to manipulate. Anything we want to manipulate here, we have to say mutating function. First, we'll say in queue. In queue is add-in, so item of type T. So here in queue, add. So item dot append, well elements 
elements that append and here we have item. Next we have our DQ function. What's happening? Oh. Oof. Mutating function DQ. will return some optional type because maybe there's no items to the queue. So the queue remove item from front of elements array. Let's write an is empty function, so not function rather property. So is empty returns a boolean value. And here we simply return elements dot is empty. So is empty just checks to see if my elements array is empty. So here we'll have a guard statement. So guard, if it's not empty, else return nil. So first we check to see if it's not empty. If it's not empty, we could go ahead and remove from that elements array. If not, just simply return nil. Other than that, we'll say return, we'll say return elements dot remove first. <coughs> Right. So here we have our dequeue function. It removes from the front of the array. We have our in queue function. It just appends to the back of the array. And appends, again, very similar to an array. Well, it is a stack array. It just adds to the end of it. So we took care of our is empty property. We took care of our in queue function. And we took care of our dequeue function. What else we have to do? Let's have a count. So public our count is an integer and simply just returns elements that count and we have a peak computed property as well so public var peak returns an optional t and here return elements that first Down here? So pick takes a look at the front of or returns returns the item in does not remove it. Why is what? Is that remove first? What do you mean? Oh, sorry. Remove first. Remember, you dequeue in, right? If you. First in, first out. So you want to take out the first object. If we go back here, if this is the front, I want to take out the first object in the queue, not the last one. I add to the back, I remove from the front. Yes, yes, yes. We add to the back, we remove from the front. Cool, very good. I'm sorry? You want the diagram to change? You mean, you, you want to flip the diagram around? Um, 
Animation. That's your exercise, animated. Okay, cool. So those are the functionalities we wrote. We wrote the functionalities and we wrote the properties of it. So let's go ahead and create a test for it. Let's create a queue. Uh, let's create a Q string. So here we'll say Q. How do we add to it? In Q. So here we we'll add mel Q. Q. Oscar. Cool. So we have three objects here. We could have a print statement. We could say Q dot peak is at the front of the line. What's the expectation here? No. What's that? Yes, Mel, exactly. Let me just do this. So let's run our playgrounds. It didn't prompt me for my password yet. So here we have Mel is at the front of the line. Our peak function works as we need it to work. Cool, excellent. All the things we could do. Let us DQ, so DQ. If I DQ here, I could print, let's just print who else is left on the line. So, fellows left in line are. And here we could simply say Q, just print out the Q. So, we print out the Q here. What's the expectation? Kelby and Oscar, right? And we do get printed back, Kelby and Austin. And lastly, I'll show us how to just iterate through the queue and print out the values of the queue while removing everybody from the queue. So here we have two people in the queue. We'll add somebody else here. So Q dot in queue. Let's add Eric. How many items do we have in the queue now? I'm sorry? Three, right? Okay, awesome. There are queue.count online. So here we all agreed it should be three. There are three people in the line. We could, uh, anybody remember that? How can we uh, customize the description here? How can we customize the description? Back in our stats, back in our linked list lecture, how can we customize, Howard, how can we customize the description of Q angle bracket here? If I wanna customize my description, what protocol am I using? Howard? Custom string, convertible. custom string convertible, right? So custom string convertible would be that protocol I implement and go ahead and override description to say what I want to print out. Can we review that quickly? Not right now, it's one o'clock, okay? Okay, so custom string convertible is what you want to look at. You could go back and look at your link list or you could go back and look at the struct that we created with the, okay, cool. Um, next up, Let's iterate through a queue. So here, iterate through a queue structure.
So we'll iterate through the queue structure and we'll basically dequeue everything while printing out its elements. So here we'll say while let value equal to q dot dq. What does that syntax say? That syntax says, while there's something to dq, go ahead and enter my while loop. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Right, we'll need that for solving our problems today. So while the q has objects in it, go through it, remove them, and we'll print it out. And again, this is a queue structure. If you want, you could simply just copy the queue if you do not want to remove the exact queue. Everybody with me? Right? I could copy a queue. For example, here, I could say var queue copy, pass this to queue here. So I'm not removing my actual queue. And I could say queue copy, like that. So while there's something in queue copy, print it out. Print. Hello. And we'll just say value. And at the end here, we'll say print. There are. Q copy that count fellows left in Q copy. How many people are we expecting at line 66? Zero. Zero. Very good. Because we're able to dequeue that entire Q copy. So at this point, let's run the app or run the playgrounds. So here, let me open that up. So here we have fellow Kelby was the first in queue. He got the first dequeued, followed by Oscar, followed by Eric, right? Eric was the last person we queued here. Eric is the last person we printed out. Everybody with me? Cool? So that gives us enough context there to work on the problems for the afternoon. Any questions so far with what we did? Right? So you're able to iterate through a queue, you're able to manipulate a queue as the questions provide, and we'll be good there. Any other questions based on the implementation here? Again, we implemented a queue using an array, keep that in mind here, using an array. This could have been implementing a queue with some linked list that we have. So private var uh, linked list. And this would be some linked list structure of type T. So if somebody say implement an array for linked list, a linked list should exist somewhere, or you create one. But here we're using an array. And keep in mind, if you want to use a stack, like if somebody tells you to use a stack to do something, you have to implement it from scratch. The easiest way to use a stack structure without implementing it from scratch is to use an array. An array is a stack, okay? So you could basically do private var call the thing stack and some array of say integers. There's a pop last on uh, an array. Right? So I'm the same as a pop from a from a stack. Everybody with me? Right? So if you were not asked in some interview to implement a, a stack from scratch, use an array. On our array, we have pop last, right? We have append. That's all the functions you need. Append would be uh, push. Everybody with me? And pop last would be pop. So it's really about how we create the array that determines if it's a queue, if it's a stack. Or yeah, exactly. How you manipulate it. How do you remove and add those objects? Cool? So the two of them work hand in hand, just knowing the differences between them. Yeah, very good. Any other questions before we end lecture here? Okay, cool. So we'll stop here.